Welcome to Greg Hansen's Video Notebook. I'm Star Sports Editor Ryan Finley here with Greg Hansen. Greg, uh, we're in football coach fever here, but there's a very important weekend basketball series coming up. Oregon State plays Arizona on Thursday at McHale Center with the Ducks coming in on Saturday. Um, these Beavers are not the, the walkover team that they've been in the past. I've been really impressed with what I've seen. I think they're better than the Ducks. Right. They've got four really good players, the Thompson brothers and Mr. Tinkle, of course, and right. then Drew Eubanks. Mm -hmm. If they had any depth, I think they could go to the NCAA tournament. Right. And, and this is a team that historically, maybe I'm, maybe I'm out of whack here, but Oregon State gives Arizona trouble. It's one of those things. The early Sean Miller team struggled up there. Um, it seems like there was always a Shoftenar brother hitting a big <laughs> shot. Um, I think Wayne, Wayne Tinkle is a very good basketball coach. And oh. I think that his team will come in very prepared. That's one of the better hires in the Pac-12 for mm -hmm. a long time, mm -hmm. getting a coach like that. It's like Utah getting Chris Doyak. Right. You can see now, Wayne Tinkle is... He's not going away. Well, and Wayne Tinkle's son it might be their best player. And Wayne Tinkle's assistant's sons are both pretty good. Yeah. So it, it worked out. It worked out. Trace Tinkle is a guy, Greg, who, when healthy, has been very good. Mm -hmm. um, has not been healthy the last two seasons. What have you seen in him now? I think I've watched parts of maybe five or six of their games this year. And, mm -hmm. and every game, he's been a factor, the factor probably. Mm -hmm. um, more so at home than anywhere else. Yeah. I think they'll really struggle here. Mm -hmm. But that trip in Oregon the last week of February um, will be the determined, I think, if Arizona wins the league or not. Mm -hmm. um, and after what happened last week, there's a lot of doubt about it. Absolutely. What did you make of last week? Not to backtrack a little bit, but uh, Colorado, I mean, is it just a tough place to play? Are they a tough team to play? Did Arizona not show up? What do you think? All of the above, right? Okay. I, think, I think I've gone to... to uh, Colorado game up there maybe four times since mm -hmm. they've been in the league. And every time I walk away saying this is my favorite place to watch a game of the league mm -hmm. because their crowd is good. Right. And they build up to that game. Right. Everyone in the league does. But in Colorado, his fans have embraced it. And Tad Boyle's got his team ready when they go up there. Right. Another good coach. Right. Another real good coach. Yeah. But they had just been swept a week earlier on the Oregon Trail. Right. And at the same time, Utah won both those games right. on the Oregon Trail. Right. And then they flip when they get home. Sean Miller was really quick to question his players' effort and energy level. He said, and this is a family show, but we're quoting him. Okay. He said, basically, if we keep playing like this, we're going to get our asses kicked. Uh, do you buy that, or is that just gamesmanship from a coach who knows how to push those buttons? Gamesmanship. Okay. Button pushing. Mm -hmm. um, and it was time to push buttons. Mm -hmm. um, Alonzo Trier shot the ball five times in a game they lost. Right. And if you look at the shot chart, which I know we had posted on our Wildcaster account, I mean, it was like a bright spot. Like he shot five times from the same spot, and that was it. I just, now hit me over the head if I'm not lying saying this. I never remember a Lute Olsen team having their star player not involved in a game like that, mm -hmm. that they lost. The question is, who is the star player? I mean, to me, that is the issue. Who is Sean Miller talking to when he says, we're not trying on defense? Yeah. Um, I think I know who he's talking about. It's also the guy who's their best player on offense, which okay. would be DeAndre Ayton. But, I mean, who would even take that personal, right? Uh, when he's calling somebody out in the media the way he does, who is he trying to reach him? Um, that is the thing that I think surprises me, is I, I don't know what veteran will finally step up and go, you know what, enough of that. You know, let's pick ourselves up. Well, that's what he's waiting for. I mean, and who is it? Is it Alonzo Trier? Is it Parker Jackson Cartwright? Is it Dusan Ristich? Um, this team, we talk about all the youth on this team. This team has too many veteran players to play as badly as they play for long stretches. What about this theory? And I agree with what you said. They're too nice. Yeah, maybe. Parker Jackson Cartwright, nicest kid on mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. Dusan Ristich, second nicest kid on campus. Right. How far are you going to go with nice guys? Well, I think maybe you need to balance them out with a couple roughneck guys, right? Mm -hmm. Who are those guys? Well, we've got one. Right. Raleigh, Raleigh Hawkins. One roughneck. Boy, good term. Mm -hmm. You need roughnecks. Yes, you do. Kevin, I mean, Arizona, before they started getting good players, really good players under Sean Miller, their reputation was, we're playing Big East basketball in the Pac-12. And it worked. It worked. I mean, Kevin Parham having to be held back because he undercut an ASU guy may be the lasting image of Sean Miller's time in Arizona so far. Uh, where is that guy? Give me a Jesse Perry. Give me a Kevin Parham. 
Where is that guy? To me, this team needs tough guys. And I don't know if there is one on their roster. Um, I know who I would nominate for the tough guy. Looks the part, Ira Lee. Ira Lee is a big dude who knows that his job is to rebound and put bodies on people. I'm not sure if he plays enough to make an impact, though. Same with Emmanuel Acott. Yep. The, the puzzle, the mystery of the year, uh -huh. Emmanuel Acott. Um, and none of us watching the game knows really why he doesn't play. But he went from Sean Miller's favorite player to yeah. guy at the end of the bench in like a month. It, when he did play early in late October, early November, you looked at him and went, I didn't go roughneck. <laughs> right, no. But I went, a guy I wouldn't want guarding me. Right, right, right. Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've got a little wiggle room this week right. at home against two teams that aren't really <coughs> top 25 teams. Right. Is this like the last weekend you could try somebody new out there mm -hmm. and let Emmanuel Acott play 22 minutes? It's a wonderful point. It's a wonderful point. There's always something to talk about. This, this is the best part, Greg. So much for a slow week in January, huh? Yeah, and to top it all off, mm -hmm. Saturday's game is like an afternoon game. It's noon. Your deadline is going to be fabulous. Yeah. It's going to be great. That'll do it for this episode of Greg Hansen's Video Notebook. For Greg Hansen, Arizona, Oregon State, 7 p.m. Thursday night, Arizona, Oregon at noon on Saturday, right? Yeah. Right? I'm Ryan Finley. We'll see you next time.